At the beginning of the year, Nisi brought out a brand new filter system for photographers and videographers alike. This new system, called the Nisi Swift system, is designed to basically make filter use simpler, easier to use, and ostensibly a little bit cheaper as well than going the whole hog and buying a square filter system with all the various attachments and holders and bits of glass that you're likely to use. If anything though, it's made my life a little bit more complicated as now when somebody says, which filters should I buy? I have to point out that there are two systems available to them and there are pros and cons to choosing something like the Swift system on the one hand or going whole hog and getting a V7 square filter system for your camera equipment. So in this video, what I'm planning to do is look at the pros and cons of the two different systems the Swift system on the one hand and the full V7 system on the other. Buckle in as we go on a filter ride. And if you have any other questions at the end of this, please remember to pop them into the comments fields below the screen and I will try to get back to you on any other interesting bits and pieces that I might not necessarily cover in this video itself. On the note of this video, when you've finished watching, please remember to pop a like and a subscribe into the relevant fields underneath the video screen itself. Uh, your support ensures that I can continue making videos just like this, as well as videos along Capture One, photo essays, reviews of various bits of equipment, etc, etc. Cool! Without further ado, let's dive into the pros and the cons of the Swift versus the V7. The first criteria we're going to look at is that of simplicity or complexity. The Swift system is incredibly easy to use. Basically, all it requires is a adapter ring, which you can add to the front of your lens, and then the adapter ring itself can have filters attached through a pressure mount system. All I mean is that every filter can be pushed on or pulled off, and simple pressure holds the filter into place on the camera itself. The adapter ring that comes with the full Nisi FS kit can basically stay on the front of your lens if you would like because every single filter and every adapter that comes with the kit also has its own lens cap which works in exactly the same way. At the moment I have a 10 stop neutral density filter on the front of a 24 millimeter lens and the lens cap comes off nice and easily and with a little bit of pull so too does the filter. There's enough pressure though that it cannot accidentally slip off the front of your camera. So it's a really, really simple system to use. If I don't want the filter on, I can simply pop the lens cap on and Bob's your uncle, it works quite nicely. And similarly, it works with the polarizer as well. So you can take the polarizer and you can simply push it on. So it means that if you have multiple cameras with different filter threads, you can use the same filter on all of those, hence the term system. V7 on the other hand is somewhat more complicated to use. You first have to add one of the adapter rings and if you buy the full V7 holder kit it comes with a 67, 72, 77 millimeter adapter rings and the master ring itself has an 82 millimeter thread. So you first have to add your adapter ring, then you have to add your master ring, then you have to add your filter holder. So it's somewhat more complex if you are actually setting up and getting in the field and putting all your filters onto your camera. And this is the stumbling block that a lot of beginner photographers hit when they start using filters for the first time. The V7 is not easy to use. It takes a little bit of practice. Once you've had that practice, it's very simple and it just becomes part of your workflow when you're setting up taking a landscape photograph. With the Swift, on the other hand, it's very, very simple. You add the adapter ring, you push the filter on. Done. So in terms of simplicity or complexity, the Swift wins hands down. The next criteria we're going to look at is that of weight. Now one of the advantages of the Swift system over the V7 system is a decided lack of weight. If I take the Nisi FSND Swift kit, which consists of 3-stop, 6-stop, 10-stop filters, as well as adapter rings for 67, 72, 77 and 82 millimeter threads, as well as seven lens caps and the package itself, if I add a polarizer, which I highly recommend you do so, it comes to 477 grams. The V7, on the other hand, with the same setup, so in other words, adapter rings for 67, 72, 77 millimeters, and then the master ring, a polarizer and the three neutral density filters, three, six, and 10 stop, this comes to 481 grams. So not all that much heavier. However, there's a rub to this. If I were to take these little caps away from the FSND kit and only have one cap for the camera that I'm using, 
it now comes down to 382 grams, which is 100 grams less weight to carry in comparison to carrying something like the V7 kit with the same filters and a bag, obviously. In terms of weight, again, the Swift system wins over that of the V7. Then we can consider cost, because one of the biggest selling points of the Swift system is the fact that it is significantly cheaper. In South Africa, if you look at the 82 mm Swift FSND kit, which consists of three stop, six stop, 10 stop filters, four adapters, and the bag itself, it comes to around 6,000 Rand. In the US, I believe it's around $250 for that same kit. If you add the circular polarizer for the 82 millimeter kit, and I highly recommend adding this filter because it, in, it is just a joy to use, it's really simple to add, and obviously you're going to want to potentially use it in conjunction with the filters themselves, then it comes to about 8,900 Rand. It's still worth it in my opinion, but 8,900 Rand in South Africa, and, and in the US it's around uh, $360 or so. I speak under correction over there, but at least in South Africa, you're gonna pay around 8,900 for the polarizer and the filters themselves. Okay, so that sounds like it's quite a lot of money, but when you compare that to the V7 system, the V7 holder, polarizer, and the three filters, along with the bag and the kit and whatever you want to have with that, is going to set you back over 12,400 Rand. So there is a significant difference between the two. There's almost 4,000 rands difference between the Swift system and the V7 system, the square filters. So from price, it also looks like the Swift is in the lead and has a serious pro to it in that it is significantly cheaper. But this of course doesn't mean that the Swift system is the outright winner in this regard because there are several advantages to using the more complex, slightly heavier and more expensive 100 millimeter square filter system is the V7. For a start, there are significantly more filters available for the square format. Yes, I'm sure that there will be additional filters coming out soon with the Swift system. So for instance, you can hopefully get a natural night filter or a soft, uh, star soft filter in future. But at the moment, if you want the full array of filters that are available, including things like the star soft filter or the natural night filter or any of the other myriad number of filters that are available for the square format system, they are available. You can buy them right now and use them on your square format um, adapter. The other huge advantage of going with a standard 100 millimeter square filter adapter is that other manufacturer of filters are also acceptable in the format. So you can use Lee filters, you can use Tiffin filters, you can use Singray filters, you can use Koken, and of course you can use Firecrest and so on and so forth. So the 100 square millimeter system is compatible. It's cross compatible with a range of other manufacturers, which is a huge advantage. Then there is the big, big, big elephant in the room, and that happens to be the graduated neutral density filter. There is currently no graduated neutral density filter for the Swift system, and I doubt that there ever will be one. So if you shoot with grads, i.e. these filters that have a neutral density portion in the upper portion of the glass and are clear at the rest of the, through the rest of the glass, if you shoot grads, you have to use a square filter system like the Nisi V7. It's just, that's a given. You can't find a grad filter for the Swift system. And the other disadvantage, of course, is even if they did have a grad filter, it's only going to be gradated down to halfway level. Whereas when you are using a full V7 system, it means that you can adjust where your glass is going to be positioned and you can adjust where the horizon is going to sit for your gradation. Then there is the other significant advantage that the V7 has over the Swift system, and that is of vignetting. Now vignetting occurs when you have a filter system or a large filter or a lens hood sometimes that is in front of the camera. And when you're at your widest angle on a zoom lens or your closest focusing distance, what happens is that the edges of the frame go ever slightly dark or completely dark like you're looking down a tunnel. That's called vignetting. The Swift system has been designed that when you're using an individual filter, there is no vignetting. So if I'm using my 10 stop or a polarizer or a three stop or whatever I put on, on my camera, it's not gonna vignette. Even when you're using a 16 millimeter lens or a 16 millimeter focal length on a 16 to 35 millimeter lens, 
which is pretty much the widest you're going to get when we start talking about filtering our lenses. Unfortunately, as soon as you add another filter to that, at 16 millimeters, you are going to vignette. If you add additional filters, so in other words, let's say I want to create a super stop effect and I put a 10 stop and a six stop and I still want to use a polarizer, that's three filters. I'm going to get vignetting no matter what I do, whether I'm focused up close or on infinity, there is going to be dark edges to the extremities of my frame. This is not the case if you're shooting with the V7. The V7 has been designed around keeping your 16 millimeter on a 16 to 35 vignette free. So I can stack up to three filters and a polarizer. So that's four filters. And at 16 millimeters, I still don't get any vignetting when I am focused middle to infinity distance. If I'm focused at my closest focusing distance, yes, there is vignetting. But again, you can remove the front rail of your filter holder, in which case, even at the closest focus setting, you will not get any vignetting, which means that I can take that rail away and add two filters and a polarizer and still not get any vignetting when I'm shooting. So if you're gonna be shooting with ultra wide lenses and you want to be able to use multiple filters, so call it a neutral density filter and a polarizer, then the only way you're going to avoid vignetting is by using the V7 system, the square filter system. If you're shooting on anything slightly more telecentric, so call it a 20 millimeter upwards or probably 24 millimeter on a full frame camera, then the Swift system is going to work even when you stack the filters. But if you're gonna shoot with a ultra wide lens, like a 16 millimeter lens, and you want to avoid vignetting and still use filters, then you're gonna to have to go with the B7. So unfortunately, that actually means that the two filter systems are in something of a tie. When it comes to cost, simplicity, and weight, the Swift system absolutely wins hands down. However, if you're using grad filters, specialist filters like the Nisi Night filter or additional other types of filters like that, or are using an ultra wide angle lens like a 16 millimeter, then the V7 wins, which makes your choice rather more complicated because in a way there's place in your camera bag for both filter systems. So here's my advice basically. If you are not worried about shooting blend exposures, so in other words, a photograph for your highlights and a photograph for your shadow and combining them using raw editors or Photoshop, then get the Swift system. This is particularly the case if you're not using a ultra wide angle lens. On the other hand, if you are shooting using an ultra wide angle lens like a 16 millimeter and you want to get everything right in a single frame, so in other words, necessitating the use of a grad filter occasionally, then plump for the extra money and get the V7. My personal use, use scenario is that I will probably stick with the V7, although I really, really like the polarizer from the Nisi Swift system. And at the very least, what you can always do is buy the polarizer and the correct individual adapter rings, and then you can get a polarizer that will fit all of your lenses, which is really simple to use in comparison to using the polarizer on the V7 system and is really robust because it has that nice metal frame around it. And with the adapters, it means you can add it to as many lenses as you would like by only buying one filter. So from that alone, I mean the Swift, the Swift system CPL is fantastic. Quite likely this video hasn't actually helped you make a decision over the two filter systems because they're both great. You've just got to decide which is the most important criteria for you as to which filter system works the best for your usage case. Okay, thanks very much for watching. As I said before, if you've enjoyed it, please remember to pop a like and a subscribe into the video. If you want to hear more about Nisi filters or you have some other questions pertaining to the filter systems themselves, please drop them into the comments below. I will try and catch up with them at some point and give you some feedback. Again, thanks very much for watching. Hope to catch you on the next one soon. Cheers.